All right, guys, today we're gonna to be trying to fix one of the main problems with this car, which is the brake pedal. I say main problems, it's pretty much the only problem. And it's the brake pedal. It doesn't feel very good. It's brake by wire system. There's just like no initial bite at all. It feels like you've got to press the pedal for like two seconds before anything happens. It's not very easy to modulate, blah, blah, blah. I kind of covered all this in my initial impressions video. But yeah, we're gonna try and fix that by putting some different pads in. Now, I didn't think that pads would be the problem. I assumed because this is the first brake by wire car I've had, and it's the first car that has a brake pedal that feels this bad, I just kind of blamed it on that. But I have heard from other people that if you put some different pads in, it does improve the pedal feel considerably, which is weird because the pedal isn't directly connected to the pads because of brake by wire. But whatever, we're gonna try it, and I've got a couple of different brake pads. In fact, let me, let me explain. All right, so what we've got is some EBC pads for the rear, yellow stuff, and some Tarox pads for the front. These are the Strada pads, not the Corsa pads. Now, the reason for the mismatch is because originally I ordered EBC for the front and rear because I've used them on other cars and they felt good. Um, but that was like a month ago. The front still haven't turned up and they still can't even tell me when they're going to turn up. So I've kind of given up waiting for them now. We're going to try some of these Tarox ones on the front. Now today, we're just gonna do the fronts because I wanna kinda of just get a feel for exactly how much difference that makes. The fronts, if you don't know, on most cars, like most road cars, the fronts do the vast majority of the braking. So they should make the biggest difference by far. I mean, you can tell by the size compared to them. They do a lot more of the braking. So we're just gonna do the fronts today. I'll do a separate video on when I get the rears in and maybe at some point when the fronts for the EBCs eventually turn up, we'll swap them out with these to see how much difference that makes. But I'm hoping that anything is gonna be a big improvement over the stock pads. So uh, yeah, let's, let's get these on. The front should be pretty easy. Literally just knock two pins out, take one bolt out and then slide these in. The rears are a little bit more involved because you've got to take the caliper off, but it's still not a particularly big job. Um, so yeah, hopefully this will go nice and smoothly. So first thing we've got to do is take the wheel off, obviously. See that right there is the beauty of wheel studs. When you take the last stud off, or the last nut in this case, the wheel just hangs there and then you can just take it off. Right, so first thing I've discovered, this bolt that we've got to take out um, on the back side, it's 13 mil nut or bolt head, but you need to use a fairly thin uh, socket. You can't use like a thick impact resistant one because it won't fit. It's not particularly tight, which is nice. Okay, so that is the little weird bolt that holds the big bolt in. So now the fun bit, we've got to hammer these out basically. Just use a well, you can use a, a screwdriver or something if you haven't got like a proper punch, but proper punch is better. This is always tricky not marking the calipers. If the brakes have been on a while, um, these will be an absolute nightmare to get out sometimes, but this car's only done 1,200 miles, so nice and easy. Nothing's seized in there yet. Actually, just pull it out by hand. There we go. Um, so yeah, that was a, a pin. All right, so to get this uh, wear sensor off the little bracket thing, that was a bit of a pain. You just have to wiggle it up and down loads. So there's like a little retaining clip on the side, but there's nothing, you can't like push anything in or help it really. You just have to wiggle it up and down and pull it. And it eventually comes off. Uh, and now we've got to get this big pin out. Obviously, we took the bolt out from the back and now we just basically hammer this pin out from the other side using a suitable punch. And there she goes. So now we should be able to just pull the pads straight out. Again, this is one of those things that on the car that's had the brakes in there for a long time, this will be a pain, but on this one, it's a piece of cake. There we go. So one thing that I have just noticed about these Tarox pads is that they don't have the anti-squeal shims like built in like the EBC ones do and like most aftermarket pads that I've bought. They do provide shims with it, but you have to take this um, off on the back and then stick it on yourself. So you just basically glue it on there. Um, not a huge fan of that. Like I say, every pad I've bought in the past, every aftermarket one has just had these built in or they just kind of hook on like the stock ones did. Um, I kind of wish they would just have glued these on for me before they sent them out, but now I've got to line them up and glue them on in the right place myself. Okay, so that's stuck on there now. Obviously it's not a difficult job or anything, but you do have to make sure you line up fairly well, otherwise the pins aren't gonna go through. So yeah, let's uh, see if this will actually go in. I doubt it. Let me move the camera. Oh, they will. That was nice. So yeah, that's, that saves us one job. We don't have to push the pistons back in. And um, which I'll be honest, I know this isn't the preferred way of doing it, but the way, the way I've done it in the past, don't tell anyone, but the way I've done it in the past is to just get a pry bar in there, press against the disc and push the piston in like that. I don't know if you can see. So you use the disc to lever off. I know it's not a good idea, but 
for some reason I've never got around to buying one of those pad spreader tools, even though I've got like every other tool ever. I've just never decided to buy one of them. Because this this works, do you know what I mean? It doesn't it doesn't actually damage anything, doesn't as long as you don't hit the um the seals around the piston, you make sure you've got metal on metal contact. It's never caused me a problem, but it's not the recommended way of doing it, so don't tell anyone I told you to do that. One thing we're going to do first as well is put some copper slip grease on the back of the pad and down the sides. Now you want to make sure you don't get this stuff on the front side of the pad, this only wants to go on the back and don't, definitely don't get it on the rotors or anything like that. Um, and it should just help, well when the pads are really tight it helps it slide in, especially if you get it down the sides. Um, these are fairly loose fitting so it's not going to be a problem, but it also helps to avoid a bit of squeal as well. So definitely put it on the back where the pistons are going to contact the back of the uh, pad. So yeah, something like that, it doesn't have to look nice and then like I said just a little bit down the sides. And then that should help avoid a little bit of squeal. Let's slide him back in there. Again, normally that is a bit of a pain um, because they'll be real tight, but I've got quite lucky here because I'm doing the, the brake pad change so early. That's the same thing with the other side, cover it in copper slip and then slide it in. I realised I should just put more copper slip on because at the end of the day I've had that tin for like seven years and it's still not even half empty. So uh, don't really need to be sparing with it, do we? As long as you don't put too much on it, it's going to slop about everywhere and get on the discs. It shouldn't matter. So now we just reassemble this lot in the reverse um, order of how it came out basically. So slide that in first, just do it the exact same way that it was stock, which was it kind of looped through there. Which doesn't seem great to me because now this is kind of pressing on it, but okay, so that's on there. I don't really like how that sits to be honest, but that's how it was stock. And we're also going to put a little bit of copper slip on these as well to stop them because I don't know if you can see, they start to corrode and get kind of stuck in the caliper. Um, so next time we come to change the brakes, it'll be a pain. This is always the most awkward bit, to be honest, trying to just line everything up to push these back in. And this one's going to have loads of tension on it at the top end. This is the bottom one in. Cool. There's both of them. Pretty much all the way home. Okay. And don't forget to put this little bolt back in. I nearly forgot that because these are normally pins, not bolts. So um, yeah, it's easy to forget, but put him back in and I'll find the torque spec for that. I don't know if you guys can see this at all, but it says brake pad, tensioner, mounting screw, 33 newton meters. Um, and that is definitely what that's called from reading some of the other stuff in the service manual. So uh, yeah, 33 newton meters for that. Cool. So that should be one side done. So like I say, that's this side done. And the only thing I'm not keen on is this brake sensor wire, like I mentioned. It's like literally pressing against the pad. So as the pad moves in and out, and it's very close to the disc as well. All right, quick note from future me. Uh, the reason this wire looked weird when I did it before was because I actually had the wrong pad in this side. It turns out the, the wear sensor is not right in the middle. I didn't notice that first. first. Um, it's on one side, so like this pad came out of this side, which is fine because the little groove to hold the wire is on this, like, this upper part of the caliper. If you put the wrong side in, like I had originally, um, so I've swapped them around now, so now it makes more sense. Um, but yeah, if you have them the other way around, then that wire is kind of over here, and it's got to go all the way up and under the tensioner to get into that groove to then come round and it just looked a bit weird, which is what I mentioned. Um, so yeah, if you're doing this yourself, um, just make sure you get the right aftermarket pad in the right side, if that makes sense. The one without the wear indicator doesn't make any difference. They can go either side, but um, the one with the wear indicator, there is actually a left and right for the car. But yeah, let's uh, go to the other side and then we'll hop into the car, do the bedding in process and then see what they feel like. Okay, so I've been driving with these pads in for about a week now. Um, I've done the whole bedding procedure, which if you don't know, you basically drive at about 50 or 60 miles an hour, slam on the brakes all the way down to about 10 miles an hour, and then speed back up to 60, slam on again, just do that 10 times basically. And then you want to drive around for as long as you can without using the brakes, like just let everything cool down completely, just drive home, park the car up. Um, I usually leave it overnight, you could probably get away with just leaving it for like an hour or something, but you want to let everything cool down completely after you've done that process, and then the pads are in theory bedded in. I actually didn't do that once with the uh, GT86, and the pads felt awful the whole time, and I could never understand why. I was like, why does everyone say these pads are good and they feel awful to me? And that was before I knew about this whole bedding procedure that you're supposed to do with new pads. But anyway, let's uh, talk about what these brake pads actually feel like, because I'm sure that's the main thing you're interested in. I would say they're a big improvement over stock at high speed and like medium speed where you're pressing the brake pedal pretty hard. Like it does give me a lot more confidence now that the car's actually going to slow down 
and like it kind of matches what you're doing with your foot on the brake pedal a bit more now as well. Like before, like you'd be sort of pressing it pretty hard, like there's a lot of resistance in the pedal and you're not really slowing down that much and that's not very confidence inspiring. I'm sure if you really slammed on, on the, uh, the stock pads, you could still slow down pretty quickly, but these just give you a bit more of a sense of confidence, like I say, and like at high speed, when you press it, the pedal pretty hard, you really slow down pretty quickly now, which is nice. That's what you want from brake pads. However, and you maybe sense that there was a, a butt coming, but uh, they don't really fix the, the main problem I was trying to fix, which is more like low speed and sort of low to medium speed braking, um, where like there's just this delay still. Um, you press the pedal and it feels like for like half a second nothing happens when you just press it gently. Again, if you just slam on, yeah, everything happens pretty quickly, but that's not how you're braking most of the time, is it? Like most of the time you're just in slow traffic or whatever and you're just braking gently, or like just just pulling around and like it just doesn't behave how you'd expect in those scenarios like if i press the pedal now just gently it's a little better than stock like it's it's not quite as delayed either that or i'm just getting used to the pedal and that's one other thing i wanted to say actually is that even with the stock pads for driving it well after driving it for like a month you do start to get used to how this brake pedal works um i don't think that's like an excuse or a reason to say oh it's fine because like you shouldn't have to get used to that and the, the byproduct of that is that when you jump in another car now the brake pedal feels really weird and really like soft and strange and obviously it's, it's this car that's wrong do you know what i mean it's not like every other car is wrong and this car's got it right no it's this car is weird and every other car is normal and so yeah you can get used to it it's not as big of a deal as i originally thought when i first got the car like i think even if i just stuck with the stock pads I wouldn't mind it that much now like it's it's annoying but it doesn't like completely ruin the car for me like it did in the first sort of week and um, so yeah you do get used to it but yeah these pads like i say a worthwhile upgrade just for the fast and the medium speed braking but if you're wanting to solve the general weirdness of the brake pedal i don't think it really does that but having said that the uh, ebc pads that i was waiting for for ages they finally turned up literally like two days after i put these pads in which is very annoying um, so we'll try put them in and see if they make any difference. I'll do a video on that. Um, and we'll also put the rears on as well and see if that makes any difference. I'm not expecting it to. I really don't think the rears will make any noticeable difference at all, but you never know. It might transform the car, who knows. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Um, I will do a short video when I put the EBC pads in the front and rear just to let you know if that helps or not. But yeah, I'm not expecting it to. Um, so yeah, the next video will probably be the skids video if it finally rains it looks like it's going to rain today but it just hasn't it's just like a tiny bit of spit i really just want to finish the video off with some sliding around in the wet and see how sketchy it is in the wet because the one time i did drive this in the wet it did feel quite sketchy it feels quite slippery so i want to kind of explore that and see what it's like when you're actually trying to slide around so yeah that'll hopefully be the next video but who knows if, if it ever rains but yeah whatever's next i will see you there